Hello and welcome to AHS TV's Best of the Nest Home Edition. My name is Don Swanson and I teach English, TV, video, and film production classes as well as media literacy at Armstrong High School. And I'm also the de facto studio director, manager, person. Anyway, I, we hope that you had a good Easter break or spring break or whatever it was to you and yours. And we're happy to be back with you. And given the current circumstances, the HSTV students continue on uh, producing vlogs based on topics provided to them by students enrolled in the Advanced Independent Study HSTV elective, Video Services and Management. So first up this week, the topic for the kids enrolled in film studies, commonly known as TV2, was what have you learned about yourself during the quarantine? Let's take a look. Hi everyone, I'm Olivia Kivalowski and this is weekly vlog number two for Mr. Swanson's TV2 film class. And this week's topic is what have you learned about yourself while living in quarantine? I think the biggest thing I've learned about myself is that I'm addicted to my phone. I already knew that, but it has really shown these past couple weeks. And also I'm very addicted to TikTok. I constantly do TikToks. So I'll insert some of them here. <laughs> But anyway, another thing I learned about myself from living in quarantine is that I literally cannot sit still. I have to be doing something 24 seven, whether it's cleaning my room, cleaning my car, making a TikTok, um, doing schoolwork, and going on walks and runs is a big one. It really helps relieve my stress that I'm going through because of online school and just other things like that. But a walk and a run really goes a long way and it's nice because most of the time when it's not raining, the weather is actually really nice too. Another thing I learned about myself is how big of a family person I am. I haven't been able to see like my family in a really long time. It makes me sad. When my parents are divorced, I haven't even been able to see my dad. So that also makes me really sad too. So it's just me and my mom. Obviously love her to death, but I really love to be with my family. So those are a couple things that I've learned about myself from living in quarantine. Hi everyone, today is April 3rd, 2020. I skipped yesterday, I'm sorry about that. I was in a really bad mood, I was having a really bad day. So that's why I did that. But today, my task is to go through all of these clothes. So this might take me a while, but I will see you guys later. Hi everyone, today is April 4th, 2020, and my day in the life today is no different from any other day. My mom and I went on a walk, and then I did some schoolwork and things like that, and then now I'm just sitting here watching Netflix. But I'm trying to keep a routine to keep myself sane, so I'm not like mixing it up. Sometimes I mix it up. I did my nails because, you know, there's no nail salons open, so you kind of have to do your own thing. But basically, my day in the life is just the same, but I will see you guys tomorrow. Hi everyone, today is April 5th, 2020. Today is also Palm Sunday, so we just got done watching church on TV, which isn't ideal, but under these circumstances, you gotta do what you gotta do. But anyway, today is a really nice day, so I'm gonna go outside and enjoy the sun. But that is all for this week's video. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope you all stay safe and healthy and have a happy Easter next week. I filmed a couple clips of me figuring out things that I've learned over this time of being in quarantine and I put it together in a video. So let's get to it. The first thing I've learned is that I actually enjoy going to school. Shocker, right? I've learned that I still like Spongebob. Another thing I learned is that apparently I rely on a lot of small unnecessary businesses. I also learned that I rely on coffee to get me through my day. I also learned that I actually like breakfast. Because I never eat breakfast when I'm in school because it's too early to eat breakfast. I've learned that my dad is a handyman and likes to do a thousand projects in the house since he is locked up inside. Exhibit number two.
have learned that not having to put makeup on every day for school is a blessing. I learned that staying home and watching Netflix all day isn't really fun when that's what you're supposed to be doing. I learned that without school, I can't go to bed at a reasonable time. I also learned that I can sleep in really late. I've learned that social distancing is hard. I've learned how important it is to wash your hands. So you made it to the end of the video and I just want to say that obviously all the things that I've said that I've learned was just a joke and the main thing that I've actually learned from all of this is that you can't take anything for granted and you have to like cherish every moment and you really can't be wishing your life away or wishing things would have happened in a different way and like you just kind of have to live in the now and live in the moment you know and just really live out your life to the fullest because nothing is guaranteed like tomorrow is never guaranteed and things like this can happen so you really just have to cherish the moment and really live your life to the fullest and that's the main lesson I've learned through all of this and it sucks that something like this is what had to teach me that but I'm glad that I at least can take that lesson from all of this so in the end we'll get through it day by day and hopefully eventually everything can go back to normal and I'll be able to live more in the moment and cherish every moment. Hi, I am Justin Wagaman. This is vlog two for my TV2 class. Uh, this week's topic is what have you learned about yourself living in quarantine? This is a great topic because uh, I don't know about everybody else in the world, but I've learned so many interesting things about myself. And I've also learned so many things that I need to better myself in to prepare for my life. Uh, the biggest thing, the number one thing that I need to work on and that I've learned to work on through this process is my time management. Uh, I got into the cyber school thing thinking that, oh my goodness, we're finally home and we don't have to deal with all these worksheets that are busy work that they're just putting together to fill our 39 minute class period. I'm just, I, I learn my stuff now, I do my work and I'm done. So I always have the thought in my mind that, oh, school's only going to take like two hours. I can do every class in like 30, 20 minutes. At, but that's not always the case. And you have to find time to, even if you don't have work assigned for a class on a certain day, you have to balance things out to where you are working on the things that are assigned, but still keeping your mind sharp and thinking about the little things that go. Like you, you have a set thing for me. I have calculus that's due every week at the end of the week at Friday. So I don't have to do anything until Friday. But that's not how it should be. I should do things periodically, maybe like a worksheet Monday. And then if it's only like three things, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Or just to keep my mind sharp in those things. So I'm not just going through the week just being lazy and relaxed, working on English and stuff like this. And I get to Friday and I work on a calculus paper about something we learned on Monday or the week before. And I completely forget all of it because I just haven't been looking at that stuff. Uh, so it's a learning curve to try to realize that I need to always stay sharp in those things. And it's weird because no one's there to just continuously tell you to do that. Like your parents aren't your teacher. You basically in, of yourself are your own teacher. And you have to be really strong doing that. Like you can ask questions, but you're not expecting an answer right away. And sometimes there are questions that need to be answered right at that moment in time. So it's tough. And But you learn, you better yourself. Uh, something I like about myself, knowing that uh, I know that I don't want to wake up at 6 every day for my job. I'd much rather wake up at... 7.30 like I've been and going to a job at 8 or something like that. Uh, so that's kind of nice. That might change over time, but that's something cool. I also learned that I really, really, really like school. Uh, I never thought I'd ever say that. I didn't, I've never hated school growing up. I never hated it. I always enjoyed going. But of course, like senior year, junior year, sophomore year, at least for me, I was just struggling to go. It was just like I always did good in classes. It was just uh, dragging on one after another and sports always try to carry me through that so it didn't seem as bad as probably some people but I still felt it a little bit but now being at home and being by myself and no one's there to guide you through your processes and stuff like that for your day and it's hard to focus at home I would much rather be in school than being where I am um, but being that college is coming up I know this is an awful awful thing to happen to the world and I pray that it never happens again but it's good for me as a student to learn little things like this 
to keep myself occupied whenever I'm in class. Because when I go to college, I'm going to have one, two, three classes a day that are so long. And then I have so much free time. Like I want to try to give myself now. But I need to realize I need to be able to like keep my classes first, set, a tie, set aside time for studying, and then work with whatever I have afterwards. And I struggle to do that now, so I still need to keep learning that. I wake up in the morning, I do my work, then I'm like, oh, I really don't need to study, so I'll start playing games or I'll start doing something else. I'll do a project in the house. And I need to be able to do my work, study, and then fun and stuff like that. So that's still a learning curve. It'll happen over time, and I'm glad I'm still learning about it. Uh, but I hope that as sad and dark as this time is, that this is a pandemic going around, that there's still good things being taken from this. Like I'm using this as a huge learning experience. I hope other people are using it as a huge learning experience. It's not fun and it will not be fun and will not be tolerated as being a fun thing, but try to get something out of it other than just being sad and moping around because that's not going to do any of us any good. All right, that sure was pretty interesting. We're going to take a short commercial break and we'll be right back with more of AHS TV's Best of the Nest. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trod in black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Hello, welcome back to AHS TV's Best of the Nest, Home Edition. My name is Don Swanson, and I teach English TV, Film, Video, Media courses at Armstrong High School, and am also lucky enough to be the de facto studio director. Uh, students enrolled in TV production classes, TV1, were given the task to interview someone they're in quarantine with to get their thoughts on the situation. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm back with another vlog, and today I'm going to be interviewing my mom and getting her take on the state of the world and how the coronavirus has affected her. So, here we go. Okay, today I'm here with my mom. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm, my name is Lisa Stolitza. I'm Jensen's mom. I am one of eight kids. I'm happily married to the love of my life, Darren. And Jensen is my only daughter. All right, um, what are your takes on the world today with the coronavirus? My takes on the coronavirus and our world, it's pretty scary. I've never seen anything like this. Um, I'm hopeful, trying to keep the faith. You're crazy about it, aren't you? Yes, yes, I sanitize everything and pretty much you're not allowed in my house. We can talk out on the deck, but if you're not in my direct family, you're not coming in. I just doing my part to make sure it doesn't affect you or I or dad or grandma Mimi, who's our neighbor and she's 88. So I think if everybody does their part, we're gonna flatten the curve. 
Yep, and we get sick very easily too, so. I know, Dad always says for two healthy people, we get sick a lot. Yep. Okay, so how has it affected you? Um, well, besides us not running around a lot for school activities and going to church and, you know, having all of my brothers and sisters come into town and always having gatherings on the deck, um, it's pretty quiet here. Yeah. I love spending time with you and dad. I love cooking. I love actually cleaning together. It's actually fun. Um, it's kind of a blessing if we look at it that way. So trying to keep positive. Yep. All right. Thank you for letting me interview today. I know you're kind of nervous <laughs> and, and laughy about it, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Jensen. It's okay. Um, and that's all she has. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll probably see you next week. What's up guys, I'm Sam and I'm here with my brother Caleb, a former student of Armstrong, who actually got to walk graduation and have a senior prom. I'm here to ask him a few questions um, regarding how the coronavirus has impacted his life as well as um, how he views the general state of the world. So how has it impacted your life? Coronavirus has impacted me. Uh, how, it's impacted me in a way, impacted me in a way that all my classes have been canceled. My campus has been shut down, so I have to do all my classes from home, online, uh, which is a pain because it, it's difficult to be able to reach my peers uh, electronically all the time. Um, this all happened over the course of you know a few weeks. One of those weeks is was happened to be my spring break. So because it happened after that, I still have a good portion of my, my, you know, my clothes and my belongings at my apartment at school, which is also frustrating, but uh, it hasn't been bad. I've been you know, doing my assignments and, and things online. The, the professors have been able to accommodate for us, and in many situations, it's made it easier you know, on us. So um, what is your view on the general state of the world as of now? It's, it is my opinion that there still are people who aren't taking the situation as serious as they should, and there's still people that are, you know, meeting in large groups and, and going to the beach or, or, you know, whatever it may be, and not understanding that it's not, it's not about people our age, you know, contracting the virus. It's about spreading it to people that are high risk or elderly people, infants, and spreading more cases. And I feel. It, it's not going to start. It's not going to slow down until people start to take this seriously and start to quarantine and do the things that they need yeah. to do. Suffer with the rest of us, right? Because as long as as long as people continue to go out and and make non-essential trips and spread the disease, it, the longer and worse it is for the people who are actually quarantining and doing the things that, you know, we need to do. Yeah, right. It's, like, not fair for the people who no. are still in school. No, it isn't. can actually, like, suffer for, from the disease. Right, right. I have I have a good number of peers who um, are suffering, myself included. I'm, I'm paying for an apartment I'm not living in right now, and I'm not the only one. So, you know, that's frustrating. It, it's more difficult for us to, to retain information and learn, uh, you know, the material online. Yeah. Like, in... It can, it can actually affect some younger people, because I know a few people who actually have some immune deficiencies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's not, it's not just uh, people that, it, it's not just elderly people, it, it is also people that are younger that may have asthma or, or, you know, some younger cancer patients that are receiving chemo, you know, that have a uh, compromised immune system. It, uh, no, it's upsetting and it's tragic, but, you know, People aren't taking it seriously, and as long as they continue to not do that, you know, we're going to be stuck in this situation. All right, well, thank you for talking. Thank you for answering my questions. Thanks for having me. Okay, so this is the second vlog assigned by Mr. Swanson. Um, I'm here today with my brother, Gavin. Hi. He's 10 years old. He goes to Olympia Elementary, and the prompt for this vlog was interview someone that you were quarantined with regarding their views on the state of the world and how their life has been affected by the current circumstances. So I am interviewing Gavin, my brother, and I'm just going to ask him some questions. So let's get started. 
Um, so Gavin, what is your view on our current world? Well, I think it's very bad and not in very good shape. You're right, you're right. Um, how has your life changed since this has all started? Like, what has happened differently for you? Nothing has really changed to me. <laughs> it's been the same. See, yeah, like, we don't go out like, or do anything, really. We Like, we kind of just are doing the same thing that we have yeah. been. Yeah. So, literally, it's just the same. And, I mean, obviously, it's, like, harder now to, like, go out just in public to do mm -hmm. things. Like, we can't go to the store or anything. Um, I still work because I work at McDonald's, but... Like, we don't go anywhere at all anymore. Like, not even to the store or anything, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, like, scary to even think about doing things like that anymore because, like, there were people with the virus, like, out in public around mm -hmm. here. So, it's it's just getting, like, a lot more real, I feel like. Um, do you miss, like, school and your friends? Not really, but I do miss my friends a lot, and I wish I could see them in person again. Me too. See, that that's another thing, too. Like, I'm so used to, like, being able to hang out with my friends and stuff, and... Now, like, we literally can't at all, and it's, like, a lot of friends that you have at, like, school, now we can't see them ever, so, like, all of your school friends are going, too, so. Yeah. It's just, like, kind of sad, and I miss school, but I'm, I don't know. I like my freedom, but I still miss, like, the routine of school, I guess, and, like, my teachers and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and how has this been affecting, like, you personally? Like, how have you been feeling? Like, what are your thoughts? I'm feeling a little bit worried and... A little bit ag aggravated that this thing, whole thing started. Yeah. See, especially for your age, too, like, it's scary because you're so young and, like, school is, like, such a big part of your life when you're that young. Yeah. And I don't know. I just feel like a lot is, like, changing for you and this is going to be, like, a really memorable thing for you. Like, I don't know. If this happened when I was a kid, like, I don't know. I just feel like I would remember everything about it. Yeah. But, yeah, this whole thing has been scary for everyone and it's hard to understand because nobody... Oh, like around here or our age I guess has really been through something like this like this is so new for everyone like even adults like because this hasn't happened like anyone in our generation or anyone that like our parents or grandparents knew so it's just really new and really scary for everyone mm -hmm. I feel like um but yeah so that's basically all we have to say um basically everything is just messed up and scary but at the end of the day, it'll get figured out and it'll get solved. It's just a matter of time. And I think everyone should be hopeful through it all and just have faith in the cure and the government figuring it all out because there will obviously be a cure and everything will go back to normal someday. It's just a matter of when and where. Hopefully soon. Um, if we don't go back to school this year, then that kind of sucks. But <laughs> it is what it is. I would rather be safe than sorry, I feel like. So... I don't know, but that's about all we have. So thank you for watching me interview my little brother. Yeah. See ya. Tell us a little about yourself. My name is Caitlin Becker. I'm a former student of Mr. Swanson, full-time student at Washington Jefferson College, and I'm currently being tortured at home by my little How brother. How has your life changed since this all happened? Well, I had to move home from school and start doing online classes that I pay $65,000 a year for. I now spend more time with my dog, which is a good thing, and sadly spend more time with my brother, which is not a good thing. How is your classwork online now different than in the classroom? My classwork online now, there's a lot more that I have to do. There's a lot more reading, and I no longer have lectures that I attend. So you would say that us being quarantined and out of school is all negative? I would say so. Any positives? <laughs> not really. I'm, I have a dog in my face right now. There's not much going on that's good here. What do you exactly know about COVID-19? It's the coronavirus. It's a form of coronavirus. Maybe you should educate yourself. Have you went anywhere outside of the home since this all happened? Only to Walmart. Multiple locations to try and find toilet paper. You know, that was a really stupid idea, right? Don't worry. I wore gloves and masks and used hand sanitizer after I left. That's what is needed. I'd like to thank you and your dog for attending this interview. Thank you. Can my dog have a toy back now? Yes, he may. Okay, and finally, Kids Enrolled in Intro to TV were given the question, how has the media coverage of the coronavirus impacted your view of the virus and the country and the world in general?
Let's take a look. So, do I think that the media has affected my opinion on the coronavirus epidemic? Uh, I think to an extent. I don't think it's ever going to, like, change my personal opinion on it. But I think the media, especially with, like, what I've seen and what they've, like, shown me, you know, I think has made me more scared. Like, there was this one story where a 19-year-old died in Italy because they prioritized, prioritized the older person instead of him. And that's scary, you know? And, I mean, you know, they're just showing, like, one case, but that that could happen to me or to my family. I'm scared more for my grandma and my my grandpa for if they ever were to get sick with it and my grandma's asthma so we don't I don't know if she would you know like actually not make it from this virus so I don't think the news has like made me more scared I just think it's helped me like come to a realization on how bad it actually is uh do I think it's being blown out of a proportion uh, yeah, but, like, this is the big thing happening right now. Like, what else is everybody talking about, you know? Like, we're all locked inside, we all... Like, I think... Like, right now, they're just doing, like, 100% of all their news is just on the coronavirus. I think they should make most of their news, but I think they should show, like, some of the good things. And, like, what else can be done and what can we do, you know? And instead of just showing, like straight up death toll numbers and all these sad stories and, you know it's making people like older people who are more who are more vulnerable to in the news uh scared and they don't need to be scared if it's really not as bad as what the news is making it look like now it's not like the virus isn't bad but the news is making it seem like it's like the next like world ending thing you know when we will recover from this and you know society's been around for millions of years we will be able to recover that's all i have to say about it thank you all right that's all the time we have for this week's episode of ahs tv's best of the nest home edition uh we hope you're staying safe and sane and as always i'd like to thank chris barber at wiep tv for helping us to continue airing this broadcast on comcast via wiep tv uh, until next time, stay safe, stay sane, and from our virtual nest to your actual nest, have a good week.